Ja, es gibt ja den Song von Oasis, Don't Look Back in Anger, deswegen äh, erspare ich mir jetzt hier Kommentare zu Ihrem Nichterscheinen, zur ersten Einladung. Ich möchte Sie aber daran erinnern, dass Sie hier in diesem Ausschuss die Wahrheit sagen müssen. Sie können an Weihnachten Ihren Kindern was vom Weihnachtsmann erzählen, das mache ich auch, aber hier sind Sie aufgefordert, die Wahrheit zu sagen. Und vor diesem Hintergrund möchte ich Sie fragen, eine Ermittlung des US-Senats hat ergeben, dass Caterpillar über 50 Millionen US-Dollar ausgegeben hat für eine ähm, Steuerstrategie. Das hat dritte Partner bezahlt dafür, dass sie ihre Steuern mindern. Ich möchte hier alle Panelisten fragen und wenn sie nicht antworten, gehe ich davon aus, dass sie die, Antwort mit ja beant äh, die Frage mit Ja beantworten, ob sie jemals einer dritten Partei im Verhältnis zur Steuerersparnis, die diese dritte Partei ihnen besorgt hat, Geld gezahlt haben, das könnten äh, Big Four gewesen sein oder das könnte auch zum Beispiel die Luxemburger Steuerverwaltung oder irgendeine andere Steuerverwaltung eines Mitgliedstaates gewesen sein. Haben Sie das getan? Wenn Sie die Frage nicht beantworten, gehe ich davon aus, dass Sie das getan haben. Zweitens möchte ich Sie darauf hinweisen, möchte ich äh, Amazon darauf hinweisen, dass ich einen Brief an Bob Comfort geschrieben habe, dem ehemaligen Head of Tax, mit konkreten Fragen, weil er betont hat, dass sich Luxemburg als so großartiger Geschäftspartner erwiesen hätte und Luxemburg angeboten hätte, Probleme zu lösen und Herr Juncker hätte das persönlich auch angeboten. Da Sie zu diesen Dingen ja hier nichts sagen dürfen, weil ein Verfahren läuft, möchte ich Sie konkret fragen, ob Sie bereit wären, diesen Brief mit dem Fragenkatalog, den ich hier dabei habe und Ihnen geben werde, beantworten zu lassen nach Abschluss des Verfahrens durch Bob Confort, der jetzt Honorarkonsul für Luxemburg in Seattle ist und eine Anschlussverwendung gefunden hat. Drittens möchte ich eine Frage an äh, HSBC richten. Äh, Sie haben ein sehr defizitäres Country-by-Country-Reporting. Wie viele Subsidiaries haben Sie weltweit? Wie viele davon sind Briefkastenfirmen mit keinem Bezug zur ökonomischen Substanz in dem jeweiligen Land? Vielen Dank. I'd like to start with the first question of involving a third party. I think it's, if you look at the way the tax, structure, tax uh, issues are structured in a large uh, multinational company, um, it's really important to use third parties. They're good advisors. They will allow you to see exactly what you're doing, what you're doing wrong. They provide checks and balances. And it's actually pr good practice to use advisors. So the fact that you use third parties is a way to make sure that we're doing exactly what we said we are. We're complying with the law as it stands in all of the countries where we operate. So the use of advisors in itself, I don't think, is, is problematic. But this was not my question. I don't doubt that you can use third party advice. Whether you remunerated a third party in relation to the taxes saved um, they, uh, they, they saved for you. This was the question. The, the answer to the question is that we use advisors to make sure that we comply with all of the laws in the countries where we're present. Um, and I think it's important to, to realize that the use of advisors is something that ensures the quality of the response. So the Let answer is yes. I, I concur from that. Thank you very much. On the question of third parties, yes, we use advisors. Uh, advisors, and for the same reasons that were explained by Google, uh, advisors allow us to ensure that when we set up in a country, we do this in total compliance with existing laws. We have a tax team, but perhaps 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 we we have. Uh, we use uh, uh, ta tax advice because this tax situation isn't the same throughout the world. And I think it's perfectly normal to have a tax advisor team. As regards country by country reporting, I'm. Question. Was that? Um, th this was Daniel? not my question. My question was whether you paid a third party, whether a tax administration or big four company, according to the amount of taxes they saved for you. This is a specific question. Uh, I have a six-year-old son. He would be able to understand this question. I think you do as well. Honorable member, I think uh, that's not the case at all. If I understand your question, uh, to know whether we pay, we, uh, we pay people, give commissions according to the basis of their tax efficiency, I don't know. I don't think that's the case. In the uh, second question around use of tax consultants, yes, of course, we do use tax consultants around the world. We don't have people in all countries, and we're there to comply with the, the, the current and future-looking uh, future law. Um, in terms of do we 
Do we pay them to reduce our, our taxes? And often we're really paying them to understand the law in the different countries. So I'll give you one simple example. When you're going into a new country, you may have a decision of whether to fund something with debt or with equity. Where debt sometimes will reduce the taxes. Equity would not. And often at Amazon we'll, 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 cho we'll choose equity as well, but we'll understand the, uh, the consequences you know, up front of those two different, two different options, depending on what's best for our business. But does the remuneration depend on the amount of taxes saved? Certainly, I haven't seen a situation in Amazon where that's ever been the case, no. And you can confirm that in written to uh, me? We, we, can, we can look at it after the, uh, okay. after the hearing, yes. The first question, I think, was uh, from Mr. Massey about do we use consultants and do they have contingent fees? The short answer is no. Um, I've always felt that that was a tricky area. You, you, you weren't sure if the advisor was going to give you necessarily the best advice and might uh, try too hard, if you see what I mean. So it might, might encourage you to think that you should argue a case when it was inappropriate to do so. So it just didn't, doesn't sit well with me. And I, I, I know many of my um, other uh, tax directors that I meet never really comfortable with that idea either for similar reasons. Uh, the next question I had was uh, how many subsidiaries do we have and how many of them are letterbox companies? Now, the number of subsidiaries, uh, we're going to be publishing them at the end of this year. We have probably about 800 worldwide. That is down from 1,500 uh, five or six years ago, and our goal is to reduce the number to something like 600, maybe 550, by the end of 2016, uh, 2017. Uh, I'm not sure what is meant by letterbox companies, but let me assure you what we do is make sure that we do not use any of these subsidiaries to divert profits away from where we actually do business. The subsidiaries are there because they have a purpose, a business purpose, or they have had a history and they are now dormant and now need to be eliminated. And the second thing I can assure you is that with our money laundering procedures, there is no way that they are, these subsidiaries are being used by anyone, including our customers, to hide themselves from tax authorities. You know, tax transparency is a, a key theme for us and paying our fair share, ta fair share of taxes in the countries in which we operate is a key theme for us. HSBC is a, an enormous company. Its home is in, uh, originally in Hong Kong. And you know, we, we have been, we've only come to Europe really in the, in the last 20 years. So it's not unusual for us to be in what many people would view as exotic countries. But you know, we do real business in these countries and we do have domestic businesses there. And we do provide banking services locally. And so it goes back to my, my principles of fair share of tax and transparency. We don't use letterbox companies to divert tax or hide, uh, or hide uh, our customers' uh, fares away. Uh, so we then so you have everywhere a considerable amount of uh, employees in each of these subsidiaries. Is that correct? Yes, and it would be very easy, uh, Mr. Masti, to provide you with the country-by-country country reporting for 2014, and you can see that. So that's very easy for me to give you. Uh, if you want a conversation straight after this, I'm happy to do it. To the question of advisors, I would um, also agree that we use and Barclays uses advisors in much the, ways, the same way as, as Amazon's representative has, has outlined. I'm, I'm, I'm not aware of uh, the use of contingent fees for advisors. Um, given the sheer breadth of the, of the question, it's quite possible it's happened in the past. But it's, I think it's worth focusing more on the present than the past. It's not something I'm comfortable with.